Welcome back to Spinning the Past. Well, I'm going to give you a little tour of my studio. Floor is down. The washing area will be down there. It's the bathroom. So it's a nice big area. But um, today I'm going to talk about some wool washing because this is kind of the last chance that I um, can wool wash. In the past, they would have used those summer months before harvest to get all their wool washed. They would have attended to the um, harvest after that, and then in the winter, when it was too cold, there was nothing else going on, that's when they would have processed their wool and spun their wool. So now's the time for washing wool. So I wanted to show you what I have on store today. So this is a Rambouillet fleece. This is a fine wool fleece. And if you notice, this part of it at least, the staple length is only about maybe an inch and a half, two inches. And it's a, this has a lot of lanolin on it because it's a fine wool and it will shrink, maybe even 50%, depends on how much lanolin is on it. So this, I know, this part of it, I know, will be best for woolen spinning. And woolen spinning is because of the rule. There's a three and a half inch rule. So if it's less than three and a half inches, then you will hand cart it and make row logs and spin woolen. If it is longer than three and a half inches, then you will um, comb it. So we'll talk about Lincoln in a second. So when you get a fleece, see the shepherds have rolled it inwards. So now here's a part that is longer. So before you start pulling out bunches to wash it, you really should have a good look on the inside. Some may have tags on them, that's the poopy parts. Some, you can see this, um, this would be treated differently. This might be a belly wool or a leg wool or something, but you see how short it is? Um, you're gonna look for second cuts because you don't really want second cuts. You wanna see if there's bugs and all that stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do after this video is I'm going to take this outside and I'm gonna lay this out and I'm gonna have a good look. And then I may divide the fleece, especially for this kind of a fine wool that, as you saw, different parts were different lengths. So that's the Rambouillet. This is the second Rambouillet. This is a really nice shepherd they have here. Silo Sheep Farms, they're rough. So that's Rambouillet, but that's See, the crimp is slightly different on this one. Again, I will have to go through and I will have to uh, assess the fleeces and, um, you know, pull out any bits that I don't really want to mess with. From the same time, this is a Lincoln. I think I've talked about Lincoln. I'm not sure I got that video uploaded. But this is Lincoln. And because they coat they're Lincolns. They have um, they have been concocted a bit. They've become um, felted, so you can see that it uh, kind of. So that will, when it gets washed, will kind of stay that way. So I'm gonna work on this fleece. I'm gonna try to get the locks again. I think it's because um, somebody told them that all your sheep have to be coated even the long wools and that's just absolutely not the case because on these long wools they tangle it's tangle something awful so this would be the case of a wool a lincoln strong wool that would best be um, and and really unless you want a headache um, you don't want to make a roll lag you want it to be on the hand combs and then you will spin it worsted or semi-worsted this one, thank you, 
this is uh, for putting these on. So this is a Shetland I got. We'll have a look at that. Pull that out. This one, wonderful wildflower acres. She's in Missouri. Look at that luscious, luscious. Now hers are coated. Hers are Coriadale. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. And this is, I don't, can already tell, this is Jacob. So this is from Homespun Family. I got at the Isle of Fiber sheep animal. So I will have a look at this. I will pull apart, especially on Jacob's. I'm gonna try to pull out the different colors and spin those separate. So here's the equipment that I use. So I will do about oh, a pound at a time depending how much lanolin is in there. So I use a bag like this. These you can get at any dollar store, and I will put about a pound, a pound of the wool into here. And then I will take my handy dandy Tidy Cats Instant Action. This right here makes an excellent, excellent um, washing station or washing bowl or bucket. There's uh, lots of different techniques, but I am, I had a single sink and I have a single sink right now until the triple sink gets finished. And I think I told you that the plumber is in hospital and he's not doing well and I don't have another plumber here. So I can't use my triple sink. So I will have to go the way I originally learned and I would put the wool, I would fill this up maybe about maybe halfway, a little over halfway, and I would put the wool in this, and I would shut this, and then I just soak. I just soak the wool in there. Usually I do a good soak because you can get out a lot, a lot of just basic dirt before you start adding, adding any detergents. So that would just soak. I have, or I had about like 12 of these, and I think, I think I have a, I have three at least, so I'll have maybe two or three soaking buckets going on at the same time, and then I will drain, I will take this out, I will dump the bucket in the utility sink, then I will refill it, De really depends on how filthy it is, uh, lanolin and all that stuff if it's really really filthy then I might do a second one to get a lot of the dirt out again water is wonderful for a lot of cleaning so get some of that dirt out then I will start the um, raising the temperature on these the wools uh, the lanolin on these needs to get up probably 160 degrees somewhere about there 140 160 and I will show you the whole process when I get to it. But I just kind of want to give you an overview of what um, kind of the basics of wool washing is for me. So I've got my, I've got my work cut out for me and I'm buying, let's see, 15 pounds plus two other fleeces. So probably another 25 pounds in early October. Over. So I need to kind of get going on this. So I will, like I said, take some of these outside. I'll shake them off make, and look at them again. Make sure I can get off any bugs, any poop. Not every shepherd takes all that out for you. So I think I've told you in another video that you're pay, paying for that poop. So know if they skirted it. Skirt will take off the nasty bits. But if they didn't, then you're paying for the nasty bits and then the price should drop dramatically for you to have to do that extra work. So, ah, looks like I've got a lot of work ahead of me. I think I'll start with that Rambouillet. And so it's going to be wash week for me starting to do that. Um, I do, like on these wools, probably per pound very lanolin-y, 
wools, probably a total of six, maybe one or two pre-soaks, two washes in high temp, um, a rinse in high temp, and then a uh, medium uh, rinse. So I'm bringing down the temps. I don't want this to felt. It's a very pretty expensive fleece. I want to keep some of the properties of the nice, uh, look at that lovely, lovely crimp on there. So that's it right now for Spinning the Past, and I will talk to you again next time on Spinning the Past.